Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. It's time to do my full review on one of the more expensive phones you can buy right now, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G from Samsung. And they've made some considerable improvements from the previous model surrounding that front display being a lot larger, overall build quality, and adding some features such as flex mode. So I wanna go ahead and dive into this device, talk about my experiences with it. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin, let's start with the design and looks wise, it looks very premium. However, in your hand, it also feels very premium. The hinge is very sturdy. I have noticed zero wiggle whatsoever when holding it at certain angles, but not only that, just no looseness, no creaking whatsoever after opening and closing this phone a lot of times so far. Now I've said this before, but my ideal device in my pocket would be a phone tablet combo. And this is getting very, very close to that. Basically, because that front display is a lot larger, Samsung made a great choice making this screen larger. It's not perfect though. The aspect ratio makes it a little weird. It's very tall. It's 25 to nine aspect ratio and it's very narrow. So typing on it is still very awkward. If I'm typing more than a couple sentences, I'm always going to open up the phone to continue that typing simply because typing on it's fairly awkward. Aside from that, I can still open up just about all of my apps on that front display and use them very comfortably. And then if I do want to continue, I just open up the phone and it is seamless how apps on that front display continue on the inside display. For the inside display, Samsung has just made it better. They've gotten rid of the notch in the upper corner, adding the punch hole front facing camera and also adding a higher refresh rate up to 120 Hertz just makes it a lot smoother. And it's very noticeable as soon as you open the phone because the front display is still only at 60 Hertz, which is fine because I'll generally use the front display for more basic tasks. And if I'm using it for a longer period of time, I'll be using the inside display. There is a screen protector pre-installed for that added protection. However, Samsung does offer a $150 screen replacement option if you do happen to crack it or break it within the first year after you purchase it. Quick side note, the front display will get more fingerprints on it than a normal phone simply because when you have it open, your hands are going to be all over the screen. It is what it is. It's just part of that form factor. You're just going to have to wipe it off a little bit more than you would a normal phone. With these design changes and upgrades they've added to the second version of the Fold line, I'm much more likely to recommend this to someone if they're looking for a foldable phone. There's not too many out on the market right now, but Samsung, in my opinion, does it the best. However, you do have to kind of get over that hump of that high price tag. A couple of small things I'd like to see in future models. First of all, the weight, it's fairly heavy, which, you know, makes sense with a phone tablet combo and also how thick it is. So you hope that it would slim down over time. So those are a couple things I hope to see in future models. We do have some top tier specs, the 256 gigs of storage, 12 gigabytes of RAM, Snapdragon 865 plus processor. This thing flies. It, I have not had any hiccups whatsoever when transitioning from a smaller screen to the larger screen, especially with their app pair combos where you can open up three apps at once. I'll quickly swap between different pairs and it's opening up six apps in succession very quickly. It's actually really nice to see how well this processor has handled everything. And I mean, this phone just has top tier specs, so it will last you longer. There's a fingerprint scanner embedded into the power button. And overall, I like having it always on where I can just set my thumb down and it will unlock. However, I'm noticing if I'm walking around with the phone in my hand, it'll activate that fingerprint scanner and then it will time out. So I'll have to do my pattern or my pin every time that I'm carrying it around, which I do fairly often. It's just noticeable that it will uh, pick it up. So maybe a different placement, maybe an in-display fingerprint scanner going forward. There's also been a couple times when I've been out on a walk and it started to rain and I'm still a little hesitant to bring it out and use it. I definitely feel more comfortable using just the front display as opposed to opening it up and using the inside display. There is no water resistant rating. So again, just want to be a little bit more careful since it doesn't have that with this overall design. I don't even know if it's possible at the moment. When it comes to battery life, this phone has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which I was a little worried about at first. However, it has gotten me through just about every single day. It does die towards the end of the day, so don't expect to get more than just one day's worth, but as long as it gets me through the full day, I'm fairly happy with it. So I'll consistently get around five and a half hours screen on time, and I'm generally using the inside display much more than I am that outside display, especially if I know I'm gonna be on my phone a little bit longer, if I'm doing some heavier multitasking, watching videos, playing games, 
the bigger screen real estate is much better to use. And yes, the crease is still there. It's much more noticeable if the light hits it a certain way, if you're on an all black and all white screen. However, when the screen's more colorful, if you're looking at it directly on, it's very hard to notice visually. If you put your finger over the middle of the phone, you will feel it. However, I've just gotten used to it over time. It really doesn't bother me too much. This phone has five cameras built into it. On the back's the triple camera setup, all 12 megapixel lenses. You have a wide angle lens, ultra wide angle lens, and telephoto lens, which is what you wanna see in a flagship device. It isn't the best of the best. The Note 20 Ultra actually has a better camera setup overall, but you'll still be happy with the shots taken. Going forward, I would like to have seen that top tier lens setup that the Note 20 Ultra has make its way into the Fold series. And then those other two lenses on the inside display and the front display are both 10 megapixels if you wanna take some selfies. And speaking of selfies, this phone is actually great for doing that specifically because you can use your rear camera. When you are in the camera app, you can turn on the rear display and this has multiple functions, whether someone wants to see what they look like when you're taking the shot or if you do wanna actually take a picture of yourself or maybe take a group selfie, you can use those rear lenses which are better than the two inside lenses. So it's great that Samsung has added this feature. It is a little bit uncomfortable though, holding it with just one hand and snapping that picture, specifically because you have to either know where that button is or of course press the volume rockers. But with it flipped open, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. I kind of recommend just putting a quick timer on there, pressing the shutter button and then flipping it around, setting up your shot and taking it. Other ways the hinge makes the camera more versatile, if you're taking a selfie and you don't necessarily want to uh, hold the phone, you can set it on down and you can have the camera facing towards you. Also great when you are doing video chats such as Google Duo, it has flex mode integration with Duo, but not only if you're taking pictures with the front, but even the rear one, I've found that you can actually angle it, you could set it on a flat surface, set the timer and take a group shot without even having to ask anyone to take it for you. Samsung is also one of the leaders when adding software features. They have some of the best ones out there. Uh, link to Windows, wireless power share is great. You can wirelessly charge other devices. Samsung DeX is super handy. You have screen recording built in. And some final thoughts on the Z Fold 2 from Samsung. If you had waited and held off on buying that first model, you probably made the right choice because of the great advancements that made that front display being larger really adds to the value of the phone in my opinion. It makes it more useful for apps in general. It doesn't make me wanna to have to open it up every single time I'm looking to do something. And yes, you still do have to pay that really high price point for a phone like this. I'm not too sure how long you're gonna to have to wait for that price to start to decrease. You're gonna need a little bit more competition, things to get a little bit more streamlined. So I think you're gonna to have to see a couple more generations before you even see that price coming down. So again, it's not completely perfect. There's some minor things I would tweak about it, maybe make that front screen a little bit wider, maybe add those flagship lenses into the back camera. They might have constraints engineering wise. However, it is really well done. Samsung did a great job with the Galaxy Z Fold 2. I can definitely recommend it if you're looking for a foldable phone and you're willing to pay that really high price point. So that is my full review on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 from Samsung. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe. A lot more content coming soon. Be sure to click that thumbs up. As always, guys, thanks for watching.